Hi guys, uh, hope everybody's okay and I'm just going to share a quick little, I've been playing around with this because uh, what we got here is uh, I've got a little um, AC transformer it's only a tiny little thing, I don't know what the um, output of this would be, what VA it would be um, but that's coming onto this. Now the blue one's just there because it's a center tap, we're not using it. So we've just got the two outers which will give us our voltage here. And if we take a quick peek at that, let's get this meter into shot. Uh, we can take a peek at the voltage there. Again onto the AC side there. Now I hope you can see that. Yep. And we can take a peek at this. Doesn't matter which way the probes go in. Just pop, pop that in there, pop that in there. Like that, just put this down. And what we got is um, we got 10 volts AC. And you can see that there. And I think this is uh, showing us the hertz at 50 hertz. Okay, so that's what we got going into this circuit. Now down on the down on this here, you can see the output of this circuit, which is coming from this 5 volt regulator LM7805. Now First of all, I'm just going to go through the circuit again. Let me just pull that off there. And I don't think that's got a very good connection into there. That, as you can see on the oscilloscope there as well, that we've got our DC. Um, we're actually running that 500 um, millivolts per division here. That's why it's actually it's offset down here. But you can see a 5 volts RMS there, tells you at the top. Uh, we see it says 4.98 there. Yeah, it's close enough. So what we're doing is we're using this full wave, full wave rectifier. So we've got our uh, AC coming in. These two yellow wires here are the, our AC. So when it goes high, we're going to be going through this wire, through this, out of there, coming along this wire as our positive, going into the positive side of this capacitor. And then it's going to come out the positive side here into the input of this voltage regulator coming out of the output of the voltage regulator through our load which is this device here this dc load back through back through here and then we're going to come back through this part of the um of the, of the neutral back through this diode here and then back to the source and when it's doing the uh, the opposite side the negative side because it's going to be flicking from uh, so we've got our positive here negative and then it's going to go positive negative positive negative we're going to do this 50 times a second it's the 50 hertz thing and then it'll use the other two diodes to go back round um, so yes we got our little regulator here now what we want to do is just see how much current we can pull through this before we start losing our nice DC at that side so I'm going to very gently just turn this up and we're just going to just go up bit by bit, bit by bit. Well, I'll tell you what we can do as well. We can leave these in here and just keep an eye on what's going on. If I just move these round the other way round and we can keep an eye as well on what's going on with the uh, with the AC. Yeah, now well, I know that's going to make it a little bit difficult, but the entire line uh, you'll see here, in actual fact, we can actually take that up in our position and put it up here. Let's say we just put it there, okay? So we can see that a bit clearer. Yeah, we can. All right, so we can still see that we've got 10 volt on the AC, and we're still going to just be turning up this load. We just want to start just giving it milli, milliamps, really or at least tens of milliamps. So there we go. Oh, look at that straight away. You can see over there, that's terrible. So let's just back that up until we get back to DC again. Now that's, we got 50 milliamps, that's 80 milliamps. Let's just back that up a little tiny bit more. See what we can actually get out of this thing before it starts looking pretty awful. All right, so that's 60 milliamps. So I think we're gonna be up to rest with. 50 milliamps, about there. So there we got our AC back again. And you can see here, look, that the voltage is dropping. Now, the problem that we got with the voltage dropping 
is that this regulator isn't going to work very well at all because the regulator needs its own voltages to work and I believe with one of these you could be looking at like 4 volts but mm, we're hardly pulling any power through uh, an amp you're probably talking that sort of voltage that's why it's always going to be higher going in um, a little bit excess to spare now one way that we can make this a little tiny bit better not much better is if we add a bit more capacitance here if I just switch this off like this I'm going to pop this capacitor out and this is a 100 nanofarads uh, microfarads sorry capacitor at 50 volts and I'm just going to chuck something in a little bit bigger I've lost it oh here it is now this is 680 um, microfarads it doesn't matter that it's only 35 volts because we've not got anywhere near that going through here so we've got the stripe end down to this negative, I'm just going to pop this in here and then put that circuit back on and if you remember we'd already seen we are seeing little, uh, little lines coming down where our AC wasn't behaving like a our DC wasn't being DC anymore and automatically we've cleared that we've gotten rid of that so we can try and tweak this up a little bit more and just see oh and we've got um, 9.3 volts on the AC side here. I'm only going to move that in so I can see a bit better because on my screen here I've got the controls and it doesn't allow me to see what's going on there. So if I just tweak that a little tiny bit more, oh, look at that, that's uh, 220 micro, uh, milliamps. So let's go back to, so uh, we've got 150 milliamps at the moment and we've still got a nice signal there nice DC straight line and then if we tap a little bit more oh, that just that extra 30 milliamps has turned us back into a bit of a horrible looking DC very horrible looking DC so we just back that off a little tiny bit more put that back to about 130 I think we can go 150 it's very sensitive this oh look at that looks 170 and I think that's the top as we're going to get because that's uh, 180 when that we dropped out and look at this look we're dropping down to 8 volts which is probably the lowest that you want to be trying to get this to work because uh, you want a, you want a few volt overhead and as we're losing voltage anyway from our main supply from the 10 volt because we're going to have two diodes on the go we've got to drop uh, we've got to drop like 1.4 volts because of the forward voltage of 0.7 on each diode we're already using two diodes at a time when it's positive we're going to be using two diodes and when it's uh, flipped over again uh, we're going to be using two diodes and the other two block so that's pretty good like that but what happens then because i think personally what it is now is that this is doing its utmost and it's straining itself and it can't really do a lot more and that's why we're going to see this dropping down. And so we're going to quickly change over this for another transformer, slightly bigger, to see if it makes much difference. So let's just pull this out. Pull those out of there. I'll twist this. And twist that a bit. And just move that out of the way. I can't remember where that little transformer came from, but we've got a slightly bigger one here. Not particularly too big it does tell us where our uh, primary is and our secondary so the primary here are the reds and our secondary here is uh, is the blues now this one says it's 12 volts with a 20 uh, VA voltage amp um, capacity so this should do better I mean it's physically bigger anyway this I think came out of a radio because it's uh, got a can around it but this is physically bigger. Now these just come out of wall warts. You know the things that you plug in the wall, but the heavy ones, not the lightweight ones, they're switch mode, but this is actually a, a linear supply. It's um, a good transformer. I'll show you some else you can do with a couple of these in another video. But let's just uh, plug this in here, plug this in here, and just pop our wires. I think we can just drop these straight in the top uh, with these they're a bit thicker than the other one put that in there with that and again we're gonna 
I'm going to put our, probe, our uh, probes to the multimeter in there as well. I should probably pull that a bit further forward. Oh, I think I've actually broke one of these. Uh, one of the yellow ends. Doesn't look like it's got the whole thing there anymore. But never mind. And we'll just pop this in here. Ah, there we go. And hopefully that is going to give us some output there now. So as we can see here, there's a AC voltage and we're not going to see our DC voltage as such because I don't have anything else connected to show it. But the DC voltage will actually be higher than the AC voltage. If we looked at that, now that's unloaded, but let's just say um, if it was 12 volts at 50 hertz and then we times it by 1.414, it'll tell us what the DC range will be when it'll be on DC. So what we want to do now is we're looking at a, a line there on the oscilloscope, our DC, and we've gone automatically in with the same value as what we had before. Uh, I'm going to take this out. Let me just undo that for a second. You don't have to do that, but I'm just doing it anyway because it's, I think it might just be a bit nicer on, the, on there. And we're going to go straight in with one of these... Uh, Cheng, Chen Zwing, or whatever, however you pronounce that. It's a uh, 50 volt, 100 microfarads. Just gonna go and pop this in first. Uh, they call this a um, like a reservoir capacitor because what it's gonna do is when we first have our DC, um, we've changed this to DC. It's gonna be rather than going up positive down to the zero and then down negative and back to the zero other than that is one hertz one um uh one wave one uh i can't remember what you call it it's still in the comments if you remember what you call this uh i'm not gonna stay with it uh what it'll do is rather than it go up and then down it's gonna clip off the bottom one and put the bottom one basically at the top yeah so we're gonna have this in effect but there's going to be gaps in between as it goes up and then down there's going to be a little space in between there and that's what's going to cause the horrible that you can see on the screen so let's just put that down and you can see it as it goes up like that now for some reason we seem to have quite a bit of mess there i'd say that maybe this isn't incorrectly uh, something's not incorrectly there i think we've lost Oh no, it's just that the pin's all bent up. Let's just put that in there like that. Let's put that in there like that. And now what you can see here is that we have to turn this down because even that, we're moving around here a little bit, but even at this, we can see that our reservoir uh, capacitor just isn't big enough. If I turn this down slightly, that will clean up. But that's no good to us because we've still only got 130 milliamps that we can use. And we've got this good AC voltage there, so this has got plenty of headroom um, for you know to be able to do this conversion and give us this nice uh, 5 volts on the output. So let's just pull this back up again and we'll take this out and we'll put in the bigger capacity capacitor. Uh, pop that back in again between, make sure you get the polarity correct on these because they don't like it when you do it the other way around. And we're gonna run straight away from what we had before. And as you can see, that DC goes up quite nicely. Uh, we've still got our 12 and a half volts there. And we're gonna just take that up slightly, 1.8. 250 milliamps, 310 milliamps. This is looking good. Maybe 400 milliamps there. We've still got 12 volts on the AC. And that's with a little bit of load. Now let's go a little bit higher. So that's we've got nearly half an amp, enough for this to start kicking in. Now I can see automatically there's a little tiny bit of noise in there. We're just uh, just starting to put up the noise and we've dropped down a little bit on our so we're loading up this uh, transformer 
last half an amp we're getting out of the transformer which isn't a great deal I mean it's only uh, two and a half watts it's not a lot at all really is it but if we just take that up a little bit higher I'm going to keep doing it now until I can see over there on the oscilloscope there we go and here comes our noisy signal just back that off slightly back it off so it's all usable clean DC what we got there that's not bad going because the maximum we can pull out of that is one amp is one amp and there, and there we had 0.82 I'm just going to check temperatures yes that's getting warm now what I'm going to do now is just so you can have a little look at what this would they call it um, it's like avalanche when the temperature gets that warm that this will start cutting itself out so we can see it goes straight into 8.2 um, 0 8.4 there so you know we're, we're 800 800 milliamps now we should start seeing this shut down as this gets higher and higher in temperature I really wish I had a probe in it I almost think I can smell it mm. there is a little heat, sh heat shield on there heat sink on there uh, but it's not really going to do a great deal especially as it's you know, lowered down there but we could actually turn this up. We've dropped down here on our voltage a little tiny bit, but over here it says we're on 4.76 volts. So we don't need to be too, uh, too worried about that. Uh, just turn that up a little tiny bit more. So what I wanna show you, I mean, this is the maximum this actual transistor, can, uh, this regulator can run at. And what we're doing now is we're going to see this. This should start dropping down. As that gets hotter and hotter, it should start dropping down. But we don't really want to damage the device. We just want to see what's going to happen. We've still got 11.1 volts there. And uh, if I just turn this up a little tiny bit more, really, really peaking its absolute maximum. Okay, absolute maximum. Oh, and we've got a horrible snotty look over there. And look at that, look how the, the voltage dropped down. You see it drop down on the, um, we need to let that cool down now. I'm gonna back this off. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna back that off. And what we got to see there was the actual device just saying, no, that's it, I give up. <sighs> Uh, that could have been a little bit from the transform, but that's not warm at all. But that's going to be piping hot, absolutely piping hot. Let me just see if I can find a K type. Uh, there's one, I knew I had one earlier because I was checking the temperature of the room and we just stick that into there and put that across there. So, this is the room temperature around about this. And we're just going to pop this onto this and we're going to see the temperature of that. Now, look at that. Oh, that's warm. That's very warm. So we can get to see why that device may break down. Uh, because it, very warm indeed. Very warm indeed. I think we can sort of say about 84 there we peaked. Um, but it will be coming down bit by bit, of course, because we're not putting that power through it anymore. But that just goes to show, uh, one, that it makes a difference what capacity you use for your reserve, uh, for your reservoir. It also makes a difference. Let me just have a little, little nose at these diodes. I think they're capable. Like they're uh, IN uh, 4004s. But again, they do get warm. They do get warm. I'm sure they'll be warmer than that. Um, if I first put them on there, let's see what this has dropped down to now. Oh, we're still up in the 60s, that's for sure. Still up in the 60s, that's for sure. So, um, yeah. Let me just get me twiggly back. Oh, come here. So, yeah, that goes to show, one, that uh, if you overheat these too much, it will break down. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure confident that the device will work again. And if we don't have enough uh, reservoir, that this device doesn't really need 
a great deal. You can use this like this. I think, I mean, there are some ways you can add more protection using diodes to ensure if you short the out, the outputs, uh, you can have a protection diode and we can run that from the, uh, from the output back round to the input. Um, but it does make a difference what reservoir capacity you have there, you have a smaller one and it won't do the job so well. And of course, if you have a too tiny transformer like this, little Pikachu thing, um, too tiny transformer, of course, that's not gonna work very well either. There you go, that's just like a little play around with that. We're gonna do the same sort of thing again in another video with another uh, five volt regulated supply, uh, which has got a bit more complexity to it. And we're gonna see how that fares because that one we're actually gonna be using a, I think it's an LM, LM2559 or something like that. And that's a three amp uh, output device. In actual fact, we might play around with some um, three amp output devices, regulators as well for this and just see how well we do that and how much we're gonna need as a reservoir. But it's just a quick little video. I'm just gonna do a group of these type of things, just playing around. We also get to see, of course, on the oscilloscope where we actually break down a nice DC line into that horrible um, AC rippled um, effect that we really don't want on our outputs. Alright, thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one.